Morning guys, today we're going to take a look at pages 3 and 4 of the Unit 6 Classwork Pack. Today we're going to learn about something called the Triangle Mid-Segment Theorem. First things first, I want you to think about that word mid-segment, right? Break it up into its constituent parts. Mid means middle, right? And a segment is just the portion of a line that lies between two endpoints, right? Now when we talk about the mid-segment of a triangle, in simple language, we'd say it's it's just the segment that's in the middle of the triangle. But for the purposes of our unit test and the EOC, we will need to know a slightly more formal definition. So we would say that a mid-segment of a triangle is a segment connecting the midpoints. Let me say that again. A segment connecting the midpoints of the two sides. So in this diagram right here, an example of a mid-segment would be DE. The way that I know that DE is a mid-segment is because of these tick marks. These tick marks mean that these two parts are the same as each other, and these two parts are congruent to each other. What does a midpoint do? A midpoint splits a segment into two congruent parts. Therefore, DE is a mid-segment. Now, if the segment is a mid-segment, meaning it joins the midpoints of two sides, then the segment is parallel to the third side. And the way I'm going to show that is by using these arrows right here. It's parallel to the third side and it's half as long. So there are two different ways of representing this triangle mid-segment theorem. I'm gonna show you the normal way. The normal way is to say that segment DE is one half of segment AC. In other words, the mid-segment is half as long as this However, algebraically, I think it's actually a lot easier to represent it another way. So I'm going to write this in purple. This is my preferred way of remembering the mid-segment theorem. It takes two mid-segments, so two times the mid-segment, to equal the side. Two times the mid-segment equals the side, okay? Some of you guys are going to be able to look at it either way, but I'm going to tell you personally I've seen in the past that people are much more comfortable with distributive property than they are with fractions. And using the distributive property here allows us to avoid, for the most part, having to deal with nasty fractions in the context of our problems, okay? So I'm going to suggest that you guys go with my definition here in purple. Now, let's take a look at what problems might look like. Okay, so let's take a look together at example number three. Okay, let's start off with example number three. All right, so example number, oh, yeah, yeah, let's use a better marker. Example number three gives us a triangle, right? Okay, and then they give us three mid-segments. I know this looks a little bit weird, right? You're like, what the heck is this? That This is more than I signed up for. But in actuality, you're going to see it's pretty easy. Q, M, R, and that's N. All right. So first things first, let's take the information that they give us, guys, and put it in the diagram. So they tell me that PR is 46. So this whole thing right here is 46. Got it. Okay, then they tell me PQ is 40. So this thing right here is 40. All right. And last but not least, they tell me LN is 17. So this middle one is 17. All right, let's start filling some stuff in, guys. Okay, the first thing they ask us to do is find LM, which is right here. Now, LM is a mid-segment, right? It's a mid-segment for this side. How many of these mid-segments does it take to make this side? It takes two. So I could say 2 times some unknown equals 46, and that means that that mid-segment is 23. All right, let's keep chugging. Now we need to find MN. Once again, it takes two of these to make the side. So if it takes two of these to make 40, that means that 2 times x equals 40, and x equals 20. Next up, QR. Uh, QR code, whatever. All right, so this is 17, right? And this is the mid-segment. It takes two of these to make this. So what's two 17s? 
34. And last but not least, MR. Well, recall that the mid segments connect the midpoints of the sides, right? So that means that if the whole thing is 34, what's each piece? Half of 34, which is 17, all right? So that's one way you may see this kind of problem on a unit test. More commonly though, especially on an EOC level problem, would be something like example number six, okay? So let's take a look together at example number six and see what this is all about, okay? All right, so example number six gives me something like this. Okay, these tick marks right here clue me into the fact that I have a mid-segment and they tell me that this is 6x plus 31 and they tell me that this is 19x minus 36. Got it. Okay, so this problem simply tells me to solve for x, which is nice because there's no substitution property to do at the very end. So let's use our mid-segment theorem. How many of these mid-segments does it take to make this? According to the theorem I just did, it takes two. So thus, my equation, guys, is going to be as follows. Two of these, so two 6x plus 31s, equals 19x minus 36. From here, this is actually reduced to an Algebra 1, Chapter 1 problem. Apply the distributed property here to both the 6x and the 31. Subtract 12x from both sides. Add 36 to both sides. And then divide both sides through by 7. And I believe, let's see, how many times does 7 go into 98? Let me actually do that math. 1, eh, eh, goes in 14 times. There we go. Okay? So in this case, x equals 14. Let me write that better, 14. Now, one variation on this problem though, could be if instead of just asking us to solve for x, what if instead they asked us to find the length of the mid-segment, right? All I'd have to do is take my value for x and substitute it back in to find what they're asking me for. So if you guys look at a few more examples here, for example, on the next page, page four, Example 7 and example 8, you would do exactly the same way as this problem. The only difference would be that you have to substitute back in to find what they're asking for. All right, now the final example we're going to take a look at here, guys, is question number... We're going to take a look at question number... Uh, how about 13? All right, question number 13 on page four. Okay, so up until now, the only algebra problems we've looked at with triangle mid-segment theorem have involved the mid-segment itself. Now, we're gonna take a look at an example that actually involves some angle aspects, and we're gonna talk about what those are and how they apply. Okay, so buckle up. Alrighty. And I'm going to remind you that these are parallel to and 11 as well. Got it. Oh, not there. Sorry about that. All righty. So this particular problem is a little bit on the challenging side. And the reason it's challenging is it involves angles. Notice that I wrote these parallel lines in here, guys. That's because this is going to require you to apply something you learned in Unit 3. When I have two lines that are cut through by a transversal and they're parallel to each other, I have special angle types with certain relationships I need to know. For example, this angle and this angle right here. I'm going to just extend these lines for you so you can see this a little bit more easily. Okay? Those two angles are actually corresponding angles. And the reason is because they're both on the right side of the transversal and below their lines. So for something like example 12, you would just set them equal and solve for x. 
By contrast, what about this angle and this angle right here? What type of angles are these two? Those two are actually what we call consecutive interior angles, also known as same side interior angles. What do you guys know about same side interior angles? What do they sum up to? Hmm, they sum to 180 degrees. Thus, for this particular problem, all I have to do is write an equation. 5x plus 2 plus 11x minus 30 equals 180 degrees. Combine my like terms, add 28 to both sides, divide both sides by 16, and let's take a look. Can I do this division? It goes in once, four, eight, three. So in this particular case, x is 13. Okay, so let's take a step back and let's summarize. The mid segment is the segment that's connecting the midpoints of the sides within a triangle. It takes two mid segments to make the side that's across from it. And because mid segments are parallel to their sides, I may have to use corresponding angles or consecutive interior angles in order to solve mid segment problems that involve angles.